Hey guys, we are doing some content today that I have not done in a really, really long time. By long, I mean like a couple of years. For a while there, I was doing a couple of these called Books to Documentary Reviews, where I would read a book and then watch the history documentary based on that book. I did uh, some Russian history ones, I did some English history ones. So, you know, it shouldn't surprise you that this time around we are doing some American politics. And what's funny is that I had no idea that the book that I had just read had become a documentary and wouldn't have unless I had gotten HBO Max for approximately one month so that I could watch Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is a whole other video. Anyway, so what I discovered is that John Meacham's book, the Soul of America, Battle for Our Better Angels was made into a documentary in 2020 by HBO Documentary Films. And I have a lot of feelings about John Meacham in general. I have a lot of feelings about the book and I have a lot of feelings about the documentary. So let's just break this down one at a time. Starting with John Meacham, the author. The documentary introduces you to a bit more of his background than I was aware of, but as far as I knew, John Meacham is one of the authors who's written some of the seminal books on famous people in American history. In particular, his book on Thomas Jefferson, which I read and uh, reviewed. It was my biography for Thomas Jefferson. I also read a Meacham for my biography of Andrew Jackson. And I also just finished Meacham's book on George H.W. Bush. So I've read quite a bit of John Meacham. And as far as I was concerned, each one was better than the last. I really didn't like his book on Thomas Jefferson. I didn't mind his book on Andrew Jackson. And I quite liked his book on George H.W. Bush until I sat with it for a bit and thought about it, but you'll see that when I get to that part of my American President's Challenge. Anyway, The Soul of America is a book that he wrote a couple of years ago, and when it came out, I was working at a Barnes & Noble, and people went bananas for this book. Essentially, John Meacham's book is trying to say, hey, I know everything is crazy in America right now. This is 2017, 2018. But you know what? American history has gone through things previously and in the end, our better angels will always win out. This better angels bit in the subtitle and it's his um, shtick throughout the entire book really is taken from a quote from Abraham Lincoln about the Civil War. So get ready to hear that phrase a lot. I also feel like people might have had a resurgence with this book because Joe Biden's, you know, campaign slogan or whatever was Battle for the Soul of America and this is the Soul of America. So not to be confused there, Meacham book did come first. So I went into this book thinking, well, it's amazingly highly rated. People went bananas for this book when it came out. And each book that I've read successively by John Meacham has gotten better. And uh, Battle for America comes after the George H.W. Bush book in his large bibliography. These four books that I've mentioned are just a portion of the things that he's written. One of the things that bugged me in Thomas Jefferson and got a little bit better as we go forward is John Meacham is very flowery. He's very preachy, very highfalutin. His language is a very high character. So when he talked about Thomas Jefferson, it was like, the siege of Monticello, one of the best people America has ever produced. And I was like, wow, okay, this is rough. It was a little bit better in Andrew Jackson. In the George H.W. Bush book, he really managed to make me feel quite a few things. That book was really warm and really well written. So I was like, okay, he's maybe he's managed to get this, you know, tendency under control. Well, The Soul of America would in one way suggest otherwise, and in another way suggest that this is Meacham using that tendency in his writing to full effect. Because while Soul of America is a history text, 
it does require high language you know to say that this was a terrible time in human history but in the end we prevailed and he talks about a lot of different aspects of american history starting slightly with the founding and then moving to the civil war and then really taking you in a more minute way up from there he's very interested in the progression of civil rights women's rights he talks about uh, World War II in particular. He is on record in the documentary talking about how he thinks that the period surrounding World War II is the most corollary to our time that we are living through right now in terms of uh, opinion in America and divisiveness and partisanship. So, you know, if you feel like you've been living in a war zone, Meacham would slightly agree. But he also talks about different things like, you know, the women's movement was great for white women. The World War II was great because it brought America out of depression, but it also resulted in the internment of many Japanese immigrants and Japanese Americans. So each of these things has a dark side, has a downside, but eventually we reckon with these things. For most of the book, I have to say that I was slightly unconvinced by his argument. I think by, you know, maybe I would have been made optimistic by this book a couple of years ago, but after living through 2020, I'm just like, I man, sure, for sure. And also the issue with the book is that it, again, the language is la da 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 da, and you know, I start to tune out a little bit, but because he gets so committed to this metaphor of our better angels. He keeps using phrases like, and eventually our better angels won out, or we landed on the side of the angels. And for a lot of the book, I was thinking, well, that's not the right way to categorize this because it ends up saying that human nature is always gonna win on the good side in the end. and. I mean, capitalism definitely jades you out of that. And also there are some people, you know, through uh, slavery, segregation, people who genuinely believed that the side of the angels was slavery because African-Americans needed white Southerners to, you know, take care of them and lead them to the correct God. Or, you know, that separate but equal was in fact the best way to protect African Americans. You know, just using two very oversimplified moments from this book as an example. And so saying that, you know, we should just trust in our better angels, trust in our own morality to eventually win the day, to me, it just, it didn't sound enough like a call to action. It ended up sounding like, you know, just relax, calm down, eventually it'll all be okay. And I mean, that's great to believe, but I also do think that our, each of these moments, you know, the women's rights movement, the civil rights movement, you know, yes, our better angels won out, but it was massively because of movements of people taking direct action. And while he does say that, the metaphor and his description of the action to me wasn't gelling for a lot of the book until you get to the epilogue where he has a very serious and explicit call to action, which is very detailed. It's very step by step. You know, he talks about activism, participating in our political system, informing yourself. So that was nice to get that at the end when that was the major piece that I thought was missing from the rest of the book. And I, and I just can't tell if it was there all along, but it was buried in the language or if I just tuned out those parts or what. So the book might offer you some amazing, you know, just a sigh of relief. Like here's, um, how American history has happened, things like this have happened before, here's how we've survived them. And I also think that it is important just in general to say history 
has these moments that we can learn from. And it is important to know our own history because those who do not are doomed to repeat it. And there are so many things throughout just the comparatively short period of American history that were we more cognizant of these past events, perhaps we would not have done some of the things in our, that are now history. <laughs> but hindsight's always twenty twenty. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's hindsight's twenty twenty. That's never gonna feel the same to say again. Anyway, so the documentary itself is only an hour and 17 minutes. And the book is over 300 pages. So obviously it cuts out a lot of detail. And I was concerned that it would end up just being a lot of like high language. And again, none of this call to action stuff that ended up making the book good, but didn't come until the very end. The documentary only covers a couple of sections from the book and it covers them in this order. The women's movement, FDR, Japanese internment, and the civil rights movement. In between the women's movement and FDR slash World War II is a weird injection of here's John Meacham the person, which I understand they were trying to, you know, associate him with here's why what he has to say is important and can be important and why he knows what he's talking about, but having already started the progression of the documentary talking about the women's movement, to like interrupt it to talk about John Meacham and then to just go back to the flow, it was just, it didn't sit right with me. Also, you follow John Meacham as he like skips, hops, and jumps all around America, giving different talks at universities and conferences, and so you get clips of his speeches where he's talking about this book along with him doing, you know, sit down interview narration with the documentary team. So that felt weird. I was like, if you've got him sitting and talking about this stuff, what is the point of showing him in all these different locations talking about the same thing, except to say that many other people care what he has to say. It, it just, it felt like weird background stuff. The progression of the documentary also ends up, I think, taking many things out of context. Because while he talks about the Japanese internment, the fact that the women's movement did not include people of color in the book itself, because he starts more or less around the founding slash the Civil War with, you know, the issues with racism, slavery, um, segregation, the Civil War reconstruction and moves that forward, you see where things like the women's movement and the Japanese internment fit in this larger scale, this larger issue that is not created by this, but you see how it all fits together into a bigger cohesive issue with just America in general. And so by putting civil rights at the end, while it ends up being the strongest portion of the documentary, it ends up being weird. And it was unfortunate, I think, to lose all of that context by, by doing that. It was great, however, to see the late, great John Lewis, who was interviewed for this documentary. Meacham was writing a book on John Lewis at the time of his death. And so I don't know if, you know, he agreed to come and see, be a part of this because of that. I don't know. But it was, it was so good to, to see him. So if you, like me, have also gotten HBO Max to see Wonder Woman or one of the other things that are on there, this documentary might not be a bad thing for you to watch if you're interested. The book might also not be a bad thing for you to read if you're interested. Again, I would definitely appreciate some back and forth on this because I, I feel like I missed what made that book great for a lot of people. I also might have missed it because I missed its moment. Again, I feel like 2020 made us all well, even more cynical than we were after 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. So, you know, maybe this is a me thing. Maybe it's not, but 
the documentary in the end does end up at least being a more concise if a less detailed version of the book with that call to action woven throughout it as opposed to left till the end so neither of them are a bad choice of your time i in fact recommend it just so you can talk to me about it so thanks for hanging out with me guys hopefully this was of interest to you and i will see you next week bye